is a protest. This is all the time. This protest happened a half mile from my home. On average, there are 10 gun murders every year in the nation of Korea. If you were the size of the United States, in population numbers, we have 60 murders in the United States. So we also have 60 every 24 hours. Who are you? Korean people, you all are very good at protesting. It's almost like a professionalization of protests. I don't think I've ever encountered a nation that enjoyed protesting more than the, the nation of Korea. And I've been to some protests here in Korea. Wow, this is really a fascinating thing. Look at how people, are, and I couldn't tell what was really going on. I was thinking, the first time I encountered it, I thought, wow, are these, are these people protesting? Because they don't really seem angry. It's too coordinated. It's like a dance. It's like they're dancing. It's like cheerleading or something. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't figure it out. People sat down, and then they stand up, and they hold the sign, and they take the sign down. And then I came across this quote. It's like going to a baseball game. And the quote is from a Korean who I think was about my age, who went to a lot of protests and said, oh, I really enjoy going to these protests because it's like going to a baseball game. And I thought, oh, yeah. And then I listened to Koreans, oh, yeah, we're protesting all the time. We're really angry. You know, this is it. Our society, how they protest and we're falling apart and there's so many divisions here and we can't figure it out. And, you know, this is really dangerous for society to have so many protests. And I think, protests? You, you, you don't know what protests are. It's not a baseball game. This is a protest, right? This was, they were protesting after a sports event. And you think, oh, they're probably protesting because their team lost. No, they're protesting because their team won. This is a protest. A whole downtown destroyed by protesters from the team that won. This protest happened a half mile from my home. These are students, many of them my students, who were protesting because we fired, my university fired our football coach. And the students are out in the streets. So I want to ask you, imagine students here at this university protesting. What you don't see are the fires. You don't see the broken windows. You just see one van that got tipped over. And the students were not even drunk. They were just protesting. This is a protest. Okay, so 2,600. So the estimate is that there are about 2,600 homeless citizens of Seoul. 2,600 homeless citizens. So I was talking to a Korean colleague, and I said, hey, tell me about homelessness. This is like last year. He said, oh, yeah, it's a real problem here in Korea. I said, really? I'm like, Where? well, you, you, you know, you have to go down by Seoul Station, and you go to a couple places, but, you know, we have a, there's a problem, real problem with homelessness. And I said, huh, define problem with homelessness. If Korea had the same homelessness problem as Los Angeles. Proportionate to the population, if Korea had the same number of homeless people as Los Angeles, okay, you would have 120,000 homeless people here in Seoul. So when you say, we have a homelessness problem in Seoul, what you're saying is, according to our values, according to the way we see the world, we have a homelessness problem in Seoul. And I say, huh, that's a homelessness problem. That's a problem. Okay, let me show you something else. So I have an apartment in Bogota, Colombia. And, uh, and I go there. I haven't been there in the past year, but uh, see where that arrow is? 
right at the tip of that arrow, that's where my apartment is in Bogota. Okay? Now, let me say something about this. I have my phone in my back pocket. You don't walk around in Bogota with your phone in your back pocket. You know, this is not, this is a very different place. But even in the green areas, the, so, the safe areas, but you know, you're probably less likely to get assaulted there. A few more police, it's kind of. The yellow areas are the areas that are, eh, you need to be pretty careful. You don't really want to go out at night if you can avoid it. Certainly don't go out at night on your own, but uh, be re yeah, just be really vigilant and careful all the time. The orange area is where it says San Cristobal. That's like, okay, now you got to be really careful because this is, you definitely don't want to go out at night and you want to be, there's a lot of bad things can happen to you there. In the red areas are, don't go there. If you don't live in those areas, don't go there. And if you do have to go there and drive, lock your car doors, do it in the day, but be really careful, really careful, and go quickly and leave. Okay? This is Bogota, Colombia. Okay, let me show you something. This is Seoul. So here, but I want to ask you, do you see any of these colors on the map? There, there's not a single area in Seoul. There might be a couple alley, there are some alleyways that, yeah, especially if you're a woman, you're like, yeah, don't go down there alone at night. There are some places, there are a few places there. I'm quite well aware. Look, I'm a sociologist. I study crime. I study delinquency. I study many, many things, so I'm aware of certain things in this city, in this society, but there aren't even any yellow areas, big areas, a couple streets. So I think, huh. Let me show you something else. On average, there are 10 gun murders every year in the nation of Korea. Ten. You know, which is a lot from a certain perspective, you know? I mean, this is, each murder is a murder. I mean, this is the life that someone has lost, okay? Well, Korea is about one-sixth the size of the United States, right? So you're a nation of 51 million people. We are 333 million people. So I take Korea I take that 10, at number 10, I multiply it by 6, and I get 60. So 60 every year, if you were the size of the United States, in population numbers. We have 60 murders in the United States. 60. So we also have 60 every 24 hours. So let me hold the mirror up to you again. The values and the characteristics of Korean society. Who are you? What do you believe? What is important to you as a nation? What is important? How did Korea get here? How do you get to the place where you would have 60 murders and we have 60 every 24 hours? Now, remember that idea that I had to say, wow, Koreans are really critical. You know, I talk to Koreans and they say like, Ah, you have, now we're really an angry people. We get really, we have fiery tempers. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. I see that. I get some of that. But like, do you have that? Do those fiery tempers lead to that? So we have this. Well, you have this too. It's called your army. You know, here, my town, my, our campus, our campus has this equipment for the police, okay? Our town, the police in our town have all of this equipment here. It's a small town. I live in a very small college town. My university is one of the, at Penn State, is one of the largest universities in the world. It dominates the whole town. Our police, have all of this equipment. 
every medium size to large size town in the United States have police that look like this and at any moment can be mobilized in this way. So here, so four weeks ago when I was here at, uh, at teaching at Kongok, I was there during the festival. And you know, the festivals here. Right? And think like, huh, people, students are doing what students do, just drink, yeah. And, but the difference is, you know, the students are selling alcohol to other students to raise money for all of their activities throughout the year. On my campus, we can't even have alcohol if you're a student. We don't sell alcohol anywhere on our campus. That would never happen. Here, there you go, it's everywhere. Students, I was out on the campus at you know, one in the morning. Two, students are still going strong. Okay, so now, like my students, it's very similar, you know. But here's the thing that was really interesting to me. I didn't see any police. I'm like, where are the police? And they say, oh, there's a police officer there. They're not they're just dressed kind of like I am, very casual, you know. And then I, later I saw, oh, there's another police officer. Okay. Got it. If that had been at my university, during football games, at my university, we have two or three hundred police on campus like this. So then, I asked this question. And what allows Koreans to build a society without these same social problems? What allows for that? See, what allows Koreans to build a society without the same level of social? What has happened here? Like, what are the values of Korea? What are the characteristics of Korea? What do you live with that you don't even know? You know, fish are the last species to understand what water is. Fish do not know what water is. They live in water. They don't see it. They don't feel it. It means nothing to them. That's how culture is. That's how our values are for all of us. We don't really understand them unless we can get outside of them, which, of course, is one of the reasons that I really love to travel and step into the shoes of other people around the world and average people. You know, when I go places, I want to go into the average home. I talk to average people. just want to know what they think. I don't talk to scholars. I rarely talk to scholars. I want to talk to people. You tell me how it is to live in your world. What does it mean? So I have a couple answers to this question, by the way. Myself, after all this time, I guess 40 years, in some ways I've been thinking about Korea, but, you know. So... Here's, here's something. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit about you know, what I mean by this. So here would be a, a quote that a, 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 someone in your culture might say. I need, so the personal criticism is directed toward others, okay? Not directed at others toward others, meaning like my personal criticism of myself has to be seen through the eyes of other people. So I need to improve this issue or this thing, whatever it is, so that I can be con a contributing member of my groups and my communities. Like I need to improve this so that I can contribute to my people and my community. I don't want, or here's another one, I don't want people to think of me in a negative way, so I need to improve. Personal criticism directed toward others. Like, I don't want them to see me in that way, so I got to improve something. 
So like, yeah. So we have these problems here. Violence, crime, disability rights, homelessness, poverty, whatever it is. Huh. I have a problem, but I can only understand that problem by understanding that I don't want other people to see me in a certain way, so i got to fix this. Or social criticism directed at oneself. Oh, it's my fault that this is a problem. In an individualist-oriented culture, which is the cultures of the West, and not just my own, but cultures of the West. It's not. It's never my fault. It's somebody else. And here, it doesn't mean that no Korean says, oh, this is entirely my fault. i got to fix it. But you are much more inclined to start there or at least be willing to entertain that the problem, actually, is your problem. That you need to take ownership of this problem. Now, you are going to blame lots of people. You're going to blame the government. You're going to blame this. You're going to blame... But you are always going to also blame yourselves. Or... What can I do to help make this problem no longer be a problem? That's just built into thinking. Characteristics and values. What can I do to help make this problem no longer be a problem? What can I do? Because the problem, it's not just somebody else's. It's, it's, this is a community here. You know, and see, you're lucky that you're a relatively small nation. You're a homogeneous nation. You know, you are all Koreans here. There's one language, fundamentally. I mean, now, increasingly, there are many different languages that are spoken, but it's fundamentally, you're lucky that you're living among people who have ancestors from the Korean peninsula. This peninsula is surrounded by water on three sides. So you have that. Mine is a nation built upon with people from all over the world and built on land that was somebody else's land that we took from them and then built also with slaves from Africa. So it's a very complex place. So it's much more difficult, and it's a big place. So it's, it's, diff- it's more difficult to take ownership. And in Europe, it's a similar thing with European history. And here, you're kind of lucky. You have an advantage. It's this communitarian orientation. And it doesn't mean it's the only thing that you think about. It doesn't mean that. But there's a scale here. And the scale on one side is community orientation. It's like thinking about what is best for the community. And on the other side over here is individual orientation. What is best for me as an individual? Because that's really important. You know, I need to be thinking of me. I need to be happy. I need. But you, as a nation, are much more capable of leaning in this direction. Not entirely, Understand, it's not entirely, but you're much more capable of leaning here. So when I go back to these social problems, to answer this question, what's extremely important is the sense of social criticism. The resolution of these problems includes me. It must include me more than it does in many, many, and I will say most other cultures. It includes me. No, what am I going to do? What role do I have? And you don't think this. It's not conscious. It's not, you, you don't look in a mirror and say, well, there's a, there, I see a person who is homeless. What am I going to do? It's not there. It's so tightly woven. Remember, the fish does not understand water. 
We don't understand who we are without understanding either what we are not. Okay? So here. So here's the second one. So as competitive actions and thoughts are commonly directed toward oneself rather than other people, or I should have written that differently, are more likely to be directed at oneself than other people. It's very different to compete with oneself than it is to see the person next to you as the primary competition. Oh, I'm competing with that person. Either they're going to get ahead or I'm going to get ahead. It's that, it's them or it's me. That's competition in the West. This is all about me, individualist orientation to life. What do I need? What do I want? What do I feel? What has value for me? When I take the seat on the subway and somebody else could have it, it doesn't matter. I don't even see that person. It's irrelevant. Competitive actions directed toward oneself is like, yes, I got to do the best. I have to make the most money. I have to get the furthest that I possibly can in my job. I have to get the highest grades. I have to go to the best school. I have to do the best, buy, live in the best neighborhood, have the best car. But the competition, the primary, or much more likely that a, a, a significant part of the competition that is there is directed toward oneself in this culture. Whereas in other cultures, in the West for sure, the primary motivation for that is directed toward others constant competition with the other and again there's a beautiful thing here because you know you have an advantage it's a different kind of society you're competing with people who are largely like you they have a history that's similar but it matters and it changes everything values and characteristics